The human body is the structure of a human being. It is composed of many different types of cells that together create tissues and subsequently organ systems. They ensure homeostasis and the viability of the human body. It comprises a head, neck, trunk, which includes the thorax and abdomen, arms and hands, legs and feet. The study of the human body involves anatomy, physiology, histology, and embryology. The body varies anatomically in known ways. Physiology focuses on the systems and organs of the human body and their functions. Many systems and mechanisms interact in order to maintain homeostasis, with safe levels of substances such as sugar and oxygen in the blood. The body is studied by health professionals, physiologists, anatomists, and by artists to assist them in their work. Human physiology is the study of how the human body functions. This includes the mechanical, physical, bioelectrical, and biochemical functions of humans in good health, from organs to the cells of which they are composed. The human body consists of many interacting systems of organs. These interact to maintain homeostasis, keeping the body in a stable state with safe levels of substances such as sugar and oxygen in the blood. Each system contributes to homeostasis, of itself, other systems, and the entire body. Some combined systems are referred to by joint names. For example, the nervous system and the endocrine system operate together as the neuroendocrine system. The nervous system receives information from the body, and transmits this to the brain via nerve impulses and neurotransmitters. At the same time, the endocrine system releases hormones, such as to help regulate blood pressure and volume. Together, these systems regulate the internal environment of the body, maintaining blood flow, posture, energy supply, temperature, and acid balance, pH. The body contains trillions of cells, the fundamental unit of life. At maturity, there are roughly 30, 37 trillion cells in the body, an estimate arrived at by totaling the cell numbers of all the organs of the body and cell types. The body is also host to about the same number of non-human cells 5 as well as multicellular organisms which reside in the gastrointestinal tract and on the skin. Not all parts of the body are made from cells. Cells sit in an extracellular matrix that consists of proteins such as collagen, surrounded by extracellular fluids. Of the 70 kilograms, 150 pounds, weight of an average human body, nearly 25 kilograms, 55 pounds, is non-human cells or non-cellular material such as bone and connective tissue. The body consists of many different types of tissue, defined as cells that act with a specialized function. The study of tissues is called histology and often occurs with a microscope. The body consists of four main types of tissues, lining cells, epithelia, connective tissue, nerve tissue and muscle tissue. Cells that lie on surfaces exposed to the outside world or gastrointestinal tract, epithelia, or internal cavities, endothelium, come in numerous shapes and forms, from single layers of flat cells, to cells with small beating hair-like cilia in the lungs, to column-like cells that line the stomach. Endothelial cells are cells that line internal cavities including blood vessels and glands. Lining cells regulate what can and can't pass through them, protect internal structures, and function as sensory surfaces. The immune system consists of the white blood cells, the thymus, lymph nodes, and lymph channels, which are also part of the lymphatic system. The immune system provides a mechanism for the body to distinguish its own cells and tissues from outside cells and substances and to neutralize or destroy the latter by using specialized proteins such as antibodies, cytokines, and toll-like receptors, among many others. The nervous system consists of the body's neurons and glial cells, which together form the nerves, ganglia and gray matter which in turn form the brain and related structures. The brain is the organ of thought, emotion, memory, and sensory processing, it serves many aspects of communication and controls various systems and functions. The special senses consist of vision, hearing, taste, and smell. The eyes, ears, tongue, and nose gather information about the body's environment. From a structural perspective, the nervous system is typically subdivided into two component parts, the central nervous system, CNS, composed of the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, PNs, composed of the nerves and ganglia outside the brain and spinal cord. The CNS is mostly responsible for organizing motion,
processing sensory information, thought, memory, cognition and other such functions. It remains a matter of some debate whether the CNS directly gives rise to consciousness. The peripheral nervous system, PNs, is mostly responsible for gathering information with sensory neurons and directing body movements with motor neurons. From a functional perspective, the nervous system is again typically divided into two component parts, the somatic nervous system, SNS, and the autonomic nervous system, ANS. The SNS is involved in voluntary functions like speaking and sensory processes. The ANS is involved in involuntary processes, such as digestion and regulating blood pressure. The nervous system is subject to many different diseases. In epilepsy, abnormal electrical activity in the brain can cause seizures. In multiple sclerosis, the immune system attacks the nerve linings, damaging the nerve's ability to transmit signals. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, is a motor neuron disease which gradually reduces movement in patients. There are also many other diseases of the nervous system. Human anatomy is the study of the shape and form of the human body. The human body has four limbs, two arms and two legs, a head and a neck which connect to the torso. The body's shape is determined by a strong skeleton made of bone and cartilage, surrounded by fat, muscle, connective tissue, organs, and other structures. The spine at the back of the skeleton contains the flexible vertebral column which surrounds the spinal cord which is a collection of nerve fibers connecting the brain to the rest of the body. Nerves connect the spinal cord and brain to the rest of the body. All major bones, muscles, and nerves in the body are named, with the exception of anatomical variations such as sesamoid bones and accessory muscles. Blood vessels carry blood throughout the body, which moves because of the beating of the heart. Venules and veins collect blood low in oxygen from tissues throughout the body. These collect in progressively larger veins until they reach the body's two largest veins, the superior and inferior vena cava, which drain blood into the right side of the heart. From here, the blood is pumped into the lungs where it receives oxygen and drains back into the left side of the heart. From here, it is pumped into the body's largest artery, the aorta, and then progressively smaller arteries and arterioles until it reaches tissue. Here blood passes from small arteries into capillaries, then small veins and the process begins again. Blood carries oxygen, waste products, and hormones from one place in the body to another. Blood is filtered at the kidneys and liver. The body consists of a number of body cavities, separated areas which house different organ systems. The brain and central nervous system reside in an area protected from the rest of the body by the blood-brain barrier. The lungs sit in the pleural cavity. The intestines, liver, and spleen sit in the abdominal cavity. Height, weight, shape, and other body proportions vary individually and with age and sex. Body shape is influenced by the distribution of muscle and fat tissue. Development of the human body is the process of growth to maturity. The process begins with fertilization, where an egg released from the ovary of a female is penetrated by sperm. The egg then lodges in the uterus where an embryo and later fetus develop until birth. Growth and development occur after birth, and include both physical and psychological development, influenced by genetic, hormonal, environmental, and other factors. Development and growth continue throughout life, through childhood, adolescence, and through adulthood to old age, and are referred to as the process of aging. In ancient Greece, the Hippocratic corpus described the anatomy of the skeleton and muscles. The second-century physician Galen of Pergamum compiled classical knowledge of anatomy into a text that was used throughout the Middle Ages. In the Renaissance, Andreas Ves Aleus, 1514-1564, pioneered the modern study of human anatomy by dissection, writing the influential book De Humani Corporis Fabrica. Anatomy advanced further with the invention of the microscope and the study of the cellular structure of tissues and organs. Modern anatomy uses techniques such as magnetic resonance imaging, computed tomography, fluoroscopy and ultrasound imaging to study the body in unprecedented detail. The study of human physiology began with Hippocrates in ancient Greece, around 420 BCE, and with Aristotle, 384, 322 BCE, who applied critical thinking and emphasis on the relationship between structure and function. Galen, CA 126, 199 
was the first to use experiments to probe the body's functions. The term physiology was introduced by the French physician Jean Fernel, 1497-1558. In the 17th century, William Harvey, 1578-1657, described the circulatory system, pioneering the combination of close observation with careful experiment. In the 19th century, physiological knowledge began to accumulate at a rapid rate with the cell theory of Matthias Schleiden and Theodor Schwann in 1838, that organisms are made up of cells. Claude Bernard, 1813-1878, created the concept of the milieu interior, internal environment, which Walter Cannon, 1871-1945, later said, was regulated to a steady state in homeostasis. In the 20th century, the physiologists Nutschmidt Nielsen and George Bartholomew extended their studies to comparative physiology and ecophysiology. Most recently, evolutionary physiology has become a distinct